Welcome to another edition of Mindset Profits. And as promised, wisdom has landed again. <coughs> the <coughs> last time I had an episode with my mentor, Omobi, a lot of you sent some really, really beautiful comments. I'll take maybe a minute to go through some of them. There is a high performance HQ that say deep beyond measure. There is Makishlane who said, amazing episode, so inspiring. <clears throat> Eva, you said, wow, the spirituality part is so amazing. That's good, beautiful. Uh, Putty, you said, powerful, I totally relate. Eva, there was a 5S strategy is one that a leader really needs. That's great. Uboni said, Mr. Ngobiwami, so I guess... <laughs> you know the man. <laughs> you've watched it several times. You've downloaded it and you're watching it again. It feels to you like a masterclass. So thank you for that. Uh, Umato Onolo, you said Mindset Profits is loading. And at Speakers Community, thank you. You said this is a beautiful piece of work. I'm going through the comments to show you that we do check the comments and we appreciate them. One thing I had said in that episode, if you haven't watched it, please try watch it first before this one. It's Conversations with My Mentor, Unconventional Wisdom. It's episode number 12 on the podcast. One promise that we made was that every month we are going to do some recap episodes, talk about past podcasts and what our take is on them and drop some more wisdom. But one promise we made on top of that was we will answer your questions. So if during the episode, even this episode, you have questions, further questions for the mentor, Mr. Mgobi, drop them in the comments. In the next review session, we will start by answering your questions. So two people dropped some questions, and I'll go to those. But before I do that, Dombe, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Masego. Thank you so much. It feels good to be back. And I see that um, the channel is growing. Um, the podcast is doing well, which is amazing. <laughs> we thank you guys for your support. It really is amazing because we are here supporting Umasego. So yeah, no, that's amazing. It says it, it, it does It does pay. Consistency does pay. Mm, consistency yeah. it does pay. And it's encouraging to continue. So one thing that I did two weeks ago, there was a milestone that popped up on YouTube and I did a little celebration video to say we've hit a milestone. This is how we started. This is why we started. And it was 12,500 views right. at the time. As of yesterday, we are on, this is two weeks later, we are on over 30,000 views. Wow. So I actually wow. should be popping in another milestone <laughs> yeah. to say Brilliant. thank you for your support. Thank you for watching the content. We appreciate it. It means someone out there is learning something that's right. meaningful. Right, right. In fact, we, we, we saw that even the episode that we did, our inaugural episode is, is, mm. is sitting at 2,300 views, mm. which is important. We're not doing it for views per se, but every view is a person out there mm. that is watching, uh, which means then we are in service. We are in service of, of you out there and, 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 and we appreciate it. Um, let's do this. And that's what you call it. You say we are doing God's work. God's work. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes. Others will be on the pulpit. Um, we, will, we will deliver on our gifts because every gift is actually that. It's a call to action uh, because the creator or the one who made us, for me, that's God. When he gives you your, your purpose, when he gives you your gift, um, when it gives you your talents, I think you are giving those so that you are you are serving those. Mm. And you would know, by the way, when you serve those talents and gifts, yeah, they give you fulfillment as well. They do. Um, you too would feel like, okay, I'm I'm doing something here, which is which is amazing and in you, service of your gift. You say you'll be in your element. You are in your element. <laughs> my good yes, sir. absolutely beautiful. So let me get through a couple of the questions that were asked. So remember. If you have a question from the previous episode, if you have a question from this episode, and by the way, today's episode is going to be a deep thinking episode. It's one that is, if you do like coffee, go get that coffee, pause it, get your coffee, because it's going to need you to sit and think deep, think deep about who you are 
and some really, really deep questions. So it's not entertainment, this one. It's deep thinking. But let's start with the easy, light stuff, which is answering your questions. The first question from Manaha, sorry, is uh, fantastic interview. My questions for Mr. Ndombela are, may he kindly share his top books that have shifted or shaped and impacted his mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <clears throat> so it's, I've, read, I've read thousands and thousands of books, but whenever I'm reading, there is always the top five, top 10, top 20 books that I'm, I keep close to my, to my heart. Mm. Those that I make sure that at least I read at least twice a year, though I've read them many times before. Mm. Um, so one of the main books that I like reading then is the Bible. Um, <laughs> That's the cool. Holy Bible, actually, I do a read-through um, every year, um, meaning I do the entire Bible. There's a Bible plan on new version that I follow. And I think um, <clears throat> just this morning I'm on, literally, I'll have to go to the app so that we, we make this more <laughs> real and realistic. Let me go click on my U, 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 U version, uh, sorry, U version app and check what day am I on today. So on my Bible read through, I'm on day 243, 22 of March. Oh. I'll have read then Psalms 142, 143, 144, and First Corinthians 10, 14 to 33. I'll finish this reading Bible plan on the 23rd of um, July because 24th July is my day one of spirituality every year. Oh. So yeah. So I read so the, the Bible. The read through um, is once a year you go through the Bible or it's twice a year? It's once a year. Um, okay. So it's always once a year. So every every year on the 24th of July, um, it's my day one of starting the Bible. And I just do a Bible read through. And by the way, I then do verse of the day still, but Bible read through helps because we are the spirit, the body, the mind, and the soul. So what it means then is that when I'm reading the word, I may not even understand what I'm reading with my mind, but the soul feeds on the word mm. so therefore bible is one um there's also a very interesting book by Eckhart Tolle, the power of now the power of now yeah um i visit that book quite often as well <clears throat> there is also rich dead poor dead by robert kiyosaki mm -hmm. um, um, i visit that book a lot there is uh, stephen stephen covey's uh, seven habits of highly effective people i visit mm -hmm. that book a lot then there is the book then that i also focus on in terms of body illustrated um, mm. I, I read that as well. Um, so yeah, so those are the ones. And then also then there's the living biographies of great philosophers. I also have that book that I travel with me. Uh, so this is my travel companion book. Living biographies of? Um, of great philosophers. Oh, okay. It takes you all the way from uh, Soc Socrates to, to your recent ones. So, I mean, Greek mythologists, for instance, Socrates would have been a teacher to Plato. And Plato would have been a teacher to Aristotle, so the this couple then uh, follows these these great philosophers. Uh -huh. um, your Saint Aquinas, a very incredible story of a Saint Aquinas who was born a royal, but who refused then to serve as a royal because he wanted to be sort of a pariah or a beggar, and he wanted to be on the streets uh, to do whatever his purpose was and find that. <laughs> and at some point, his brothers are trying to sort of <laughs> take him back and force him and he's like no i won't do that and eventually his father and his mother and his siblings are, are giving up on him because they are trying to say but we're a prince and he says no but this power thing is an accidental thing i have a feeling that there's more to me than meets the eye and eventually they allow him then to go and just be a beggar on the streets and it turns out he became more powerful than than his than even even his dad was <laughs> was a count <laughs> uh, just from that as a philosopher, so they, they I'm tell those interesting so curious. stories. Yes. It almost, it might almost become the podcast <laughs> itself. <laughs> yes, yes. That I mean, story I mean, already, is so intriguing. But maybe in short summary, or where we, where was the power coming from? So, so the power was coming from the fact that um, he he felt like serving serving as a count and serving authority and power was not enough. Like he had seen his dad, he had seen his dad's dad. And he just felt like, but he, he could feel like there was something more to himself. So even when he was pursuing knowledge and education, I mean, he went and pursued teachers that were teaching on spirituality and theology. Mm. And for him, that was the hunger of the soul, which is what Dr. Howard Thurman calls that. Mm. And then there's many other books then that I still read as well, like your Howard Thurman, Dr. Howard Thurman, uh, The Centering Moment, 
um, um, some of the teachers that I have as well, I do read their books. So it's a number of them, but literally, like I said, the ones that I've given already in that order will be, okay. I mean, yes. Um, no, I think Manaha got an answer. <clears throat> yes. Uh, again, from Ule Palo, in the absence of a qualification, because if you didn't watch the episode, it says the CEO who did not graduate from high school, but he developed his mindset so much that now he consults doctors. So the follow-up question that came is, in the absence of qualification and being around such highly qualified people, has he experienced imposter syndrome? If so, how did he deal with it? Not really, because when I left my matric and I couldn't have my matric, the beauty, which was the blessing in disguise, is that People who feel like they have imposter syndrome, it's because you would have gone through education or through you would have attained something that is outside yourself that you are struggling with within yourself. That's how I, mean, I understand imposter syndrome. In other words, I, I'm, I feel like I'm highly qualified, but I still don't understand what my purpose is. Um, like I feel like I have all this money, but then I don't, I, don't, I don't find my own meaning. Like I have this property or this material. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's always a clash between what you've acquired and accumulated as material versus who you are on the inside. So because I don't have metric, it means I, I, I focused on building me and building self. In that way, then, when others suffer with imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. I'm actually a master of myself. So it's, it's, it's the other way around. So no, I don't, I've never, <laughs> I've, I've never, because... Because then, then it, it meant even my meaning of life had to be centered around who I am. I mean, can you imagine then, if you do not have metric, it means you're forever uh, proving yourself. Mm. And if you know that you already are good and someone doesn't believe you, yes, then um, it, it takes a year or six months or three months for someone to believe something that I already know. Mm. So it usually is people that get shocked on who I am, but I don't get surprised. <laughs> so no, 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 I don't suffer from imposter syndrome because um, I think the, knowledge, the knowing of self um, is, is higher in terms of than somebody who would have said I started on the outside. I started on the inside. So my intrinsic motivation is where it started. I didn't start with extrinsic motivation. What I like about the answer as well is it ties into what we are answering today because today we're focusing on answering that question, who am I? Because many people focus on chasing the business, chasing the money, chasing a lot of other things, but forget to search and understand themselves. Yes. True. So we want to flip that around, but yes. we'll learn how to do that. <clears throat> so beautiful. Where is he now in terms of his career? That's the last, second last question. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm a lifelong learner. Um, so learning never stops. But literally now, I've, I'm, I'm what they call, I'm doing a spiritual, I'm on a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. uh, I call it Mount Sinai. If you remember in the, in, in the, in the Bible, mm -hmm. Moses meets God in the burning bush when, when he's with, with his father-in-law Jethro, taking care of his, of, his, of his livestock. And at some point then, God sends him to Egypt to go take, out, take, out, take the kids, the children of Israel out of bondage. On their way then to the promised land, God keeps encountering with Moses. And in mm. encountering with Moses, he actually says, come to meet, come meet me at Mount Sinai. Mm. So I started wondering, when you look at all the great people in the Bible, there was a special place where they met God. Um, mm. Even those that we know, for instance, that the Lichanyane, for instance, would have met his God in, in, in Moria. Mm. Uh, um, Prophet Isaiah Shembo Mkalwendlela would have met his, his God um, mm. in Tlangagazi. Um, mm. uh, uh, Prophet Masangu of St. John's would have met his God in the, in the waters, in the pure waters um, somewhere. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm on that journey now of spirituality and trying to shift now from being the mind because all along I was the intelligent mind. Mm. But I was, I was, it was a mind that I didn't <laughs> trust as well, because it has a lot of contradictions as well, Masego, mm. for me. So now that I've tried everything, what I do now you mean by the solid. contradictions? Of course, there'll be contradictions because um, I'll be gifted in working with people, but I always said I didn't like people. Oh, so okay. that was a contradiction, and therefore <clears throat> um, sometimes I'll be on an upward trajectory, 
and then just distract for the sake of honor, know what it's like to distract this thing. <laughs> so therefore, discipline sometimes was sort of an option for me. Mm. And once I had done all of that, I think I'm realizing I'm getting older, literally turning 42 this year. It's like, okay. But remember, it's not just my, my chronological age of, of physical age. I'm 42 in my body, but I'm double, double that age in my mind. So because of then that, that, then I'm always then on that growth journey. So I'm, my spirit is growing. But also then, uh, career-wise, I am building Atlas L Group mm. as a group CEO there. We're building then this uh, global um, transformation institute mm. that should take over Africa from Cape to Cairo. Uh, two years ago, we, we moved our headquarters to Cape Town. So I'm enjoying growing that as well. And the networking that we are now busy uh, doing. Mm. I mean, we are not in the business of selling, uh, we say. We are in the business of knowing people. So those mm. are the three things I would say I'm at. So spirituality, Mount Sinai, um, and then uh, this Cape constant journey then of growing uh, as self as well. And then the Cape to Cairo then that we are doing as Atlas Cell. So those for me, I feel like are the things that I'm working on. And hopefully then learning how to become a better lover now because I was always um, <laughs> cold and un un unreachable and that was the feedback I always got that actually you're too smart for yourself and you're too proud, you're too arrogant, you're narcissistic, you're all of these things. <laughs> so also to learn how to come back now and be a feeler and sort of be able to put myself in other people's shoes. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening right now. It's an interesting journey that I am with self. Sounds like yeah. it, most definitely. Yeah. Last question. This one I'm sure you saw coming. I'm wondering how now, this is from Matlo Anolo, so how do you deliberately work on your mindset, especially if it's already set? Hmm. And you know, you, and you now have to go back and crack faulty foundations. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> In fact, Thank you, Matla Honolo, because you are taking us back to how we landed. When we landed the, the last episode, we said the mind is an interesting thing because once it sets, it starts wet, pliable, and once it sets, though, it becomes concrete. And it's, it, it, once it sets, then it's permanent. And the question is then, how do I deal with that? And the answer is, remember, setting means it forms. Form. So what it means then is that you have to go back and reform. Mm. Um, you have to reform. Now you have two options in your reforming. You can go back then and sort of break the previous foundation, which I often feel like if you do, it, you, are, you are also removing a piece, a piece of your past. Mm. And often people will say then, go back then and say, this one hurt me, delete everything, delete pictures. Yes, you could still do it at that, but you cannot delete memories easily. Or you can build then on top of that foundation and build a better foundation. <laughs> so then it's up to you. But we'll speak today about what does it mean then when we say the mind is setting. Mm. Because it's not so much your mind that necessarily sets. Mm. It's your mind believing certain things about life and the world. Mm. It's those settings that I'm worried about. To say I believe in one and tomorrow you're believing in two, that will happen. Life will shift your beliefs. Mm -hmm. to have values that you had at 10 that are changing when you're 20 and changing when you're 30. Life is That's fluid natural. like that, it will happen. Yeah. But the problem is, what do you believe about life? Mm -hmm. Once that sets, it's a dangerous thing then, because if you believe, for instance, that life is fixed, life is permanent, uh, life is as, as you inherited it, mm -hmm. then you don't believe you could do anything about life. And therefore, you then become a victim because life is set. Oh, well, I was born in these circumstances. I was born with these limitations. Or you could be of the mind that life is fluid, life is flexible, and therefore purposes, gifts, potentials can then be manifested. Mm -hmm. So usually it's what you believe about life, which emanates from what you believe about yourself. Mm -hmm. If you believe life is untrustworthy, then your behavior will be different. Oh, if you believe that life is um, life is horrible, then 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 you 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 you'll project that as well, or you live that way as well. If you believe that life um, has no abundance, in fact, life has scarcity everywhere, and everyone is trying to take from you, then you wouldn't be open in terms of sharing yourself and sharing your gift with others. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's more: what do you believe about life, and what do you believe about yourself? 
because those two, wherever you set your mind on, it determines the struggles you're going to deal with or mm. um, the benefits you're going to accrue. There's an interesting contradiction that I'm picking up as you're saying it. And they, you talk about mind, body, spirit. Are, are there people or what happens when someone has this kind of contradiction where in one part of their life they believe in the abundance of life but in another part of their lives they don't so they believe it's fluid when it comes to their career for example but it's fixed when they comes to their health they can't do anything about their health but they can do something about their career or they can do something about their health but they can't do something about their family they've got that contradiction Interestingly, the body has got systems. So you can go back to the systems of the body. You have the immune system that is the system that fights everything. Mm -hmm. And the immune system for me is more than just blood cells that you are dealing with, your red blood cells that you are dealing with. For me, I also feel like those blood cells have some intelligence. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you cut your body, you have got layers of skin and it does blood clotting and then it will go and center around the opening so that it protects you from invasions and all of that. Mm. So what do I mean? And in fact, this you'd read in terms of the, tri the trickiness of the body. If you look at Body Illustrated, for instance, mm. um, if you go back then to that very body, there are ailments that are not physiological. Mm. They're a manifestation of something else. For instance, if I feel like a failure, and therefore I'm despondent, and therefore I slow down in life, and therefore I'm depressed, then there's opportunistic diseases that could happen on me because my immune system is picking up on my, vibe, my energy as well in terms of the vibe that I have. Okay. So I have a feeling that sometimes you first have to heal the mind. Mm. If you heal the mind, then there are certain ailments that you could deal with. But also some are spiritual as well. So some are not just physiological. Some are spiritual ailments. Some came from generations before us. So some are passed from people before us. For instance, an ailment like failing, or an ailment like failure to take care of your children, or an ailment like um, family curses and, and those, you would inherit those. Uh, for instance, you are told, your dad was a loser, his dad was a loser, or you, you didn't know your dad, and now your children won't know you. That is an <laughs> ailment that I think you need to deal with and realize I'm going to stop it with myself as this generation so that I pass on to the next generation. So basically, so someone then, like that then finds themselves in a situation where when it comes to their family, they are struggling to believe they can't be good because of what they've seen. Right. But when it comes to their job, it's easy because it's them and their career and their mind and what they think. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that's why then transcendence is important. Because then if we are only using the mind and just feel good, believe it, it can be done, sometimes the mind will, will fail you. But some things are unexplainable at the level of mind. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that is why I always prefer to start at the level of spirit first. Mm -hmm. Though I'm the, I'm the, I've got the intelligence, I like step, stepping out of my own mind and observe myself think. What does that do then? It means I start in the spirit. Spirit is powerful then because spirit creates. With the words you speak, mm. you're already creating. Affirmations that you hear people say, it's part of creation. Believing positive thoughts is part of creating. Mm. Believing you can is part of creating. Listen, you'll also come across naysayers. Sometimes the reality doesn't feel like you are moving the needle. Like It's like you are standstill. But the belief could also move and, and, and create a vibration in the atmosphere uh, uh, where then you start there because we said in the first episode everything is created twice, twice. first in the spirit or in the mind then in the physical mm. what does this mean when you see somebody manufacturing a chair there's already a plan somewhere that they're following mm. when you see someone building a house there's already a plan somewhere that they're following it's not an oops thing they very deliberate in, now we're going to build this. From what material? How much of it you're going to need? What it should look like? A, a designer already knows. As, 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 as onlookers are surprised, the designer knows. So I, I want you to also work on yourself that way so that you are not surprised with your own life. So what it means then, Masego, it's a tough one then because it means mm. 
sometimes I would have to go to my spirit first and say, should I do this or should I not? You'll be mm -hmm. amazed. Your conscience on the inside, which I call all-knowing, mm -hmm. knows the truth. How do I know this? Try and say something that's a lie out loud. You'd feel some cringe <laughs> on your or butterflies or something. There'll be discomfort in your tummy. But mm -hmm. say the truth. You'll also feel the flow. It's like you can breathe. Same thing I do literally when I make decisions. I'll say, should we go record this morning? Mm. Um, I was saying that yesterday. When should we record? Should we record? And I was like, okay, are we recording tomorrow or not tomorrow? And I listen to my own peace. Mm. When, peace when, when there's peace in my, in my spirit, then there's some agreement. Not the mind hyping me <laughs> up. Uh -huh. It's the spirit that I'm listening to. And I literally say, we're recording tomorrow or not? When I then reached out to say we can actually record tomorrow, my spirit mm. was already in agreement mm. because then I don't want to just move with my mind and thoughts. I want to be part of the environment and the space because there is greatness and then there is haste, which is a German term, which means spirit of the times. Mm. I want to move with ideas when the time agrees with me because then when the time agrees with me, it means the environment, the resources, the people, all will flow with me than work against me. So it's okay. all of those things that we are dealing with then where I'm saying, start with your mind as well, yes. But beyond your mind, go to your spirit, which is the higher level. So what do I mean then? You go back to your own family. I didn't mm -hmm. have a father, right, yeah. growing up. Mm -hmm. But I went to my spirit and I had to understand what happened there. And I'm trying to break that then with my own children and their children. So it's me realizing, okay, this I won't choose. Um, for instance, there is a saying in my family that um, we do not take care of our kids. And that's what they say when they're angry with us sometimes. We are useless like that. So I have to go back and say, not for me. That story won't carry on and pass on. And yes, then, I mean, I grew up as a sickly child. But how I was healed was my grandmother, I think, saw that and manifested mm. um, uh, in terms of that healing for myself as well, in terms of the body. So mm. it's the understanding that we are always transcending. There are outlets. The spirit the body, the mind, the soul, and the awareness. There are five things inside you. If it can't be fixed at the spiritual level, then you move to the mind. You fix the mind. Mm. If it can't be fixed at the mind, or in fact, once you fix the mind, mm. then the mind fixes the body mm. or fixes the soul. Once it fixes the soul, then we are fixing the awareness. Usually the body must be the last thing you're dealing with. Why? The, the body is a good servant mm. because it's a servant. Um, so all these other four are trying to influence the body because the mind is saying, let's stand up. The spirit is saying, let's sit down. The soul <laughs> is saying, oh, but I don't feel like it. That's the contradiction that often happens. These four are instructing the body because it's the body we see. Mm. The mind wants to, to smile, but the body is feeling the pain and we're reading confusion on your face. What's happening? The body is a servant. The body as a temple is what you are instructing. So work on these four. Don't always rush to the body so who, and manifest. How Go do back. I know who the body is serving if there's all these different voices? It's which idea that you are dealing with, for instance. So if you are, if you are, if you, if you are kind and compassionate, you are serving the soul. Oh. When we are giving and we are praying and we are worshiping, we are serving the spirit. When we are exercising and eating well and choosing what you eat, we are serving the body itself. Um, when you are looking at consciousness and awareness and ecosystems and different realities we live in and different world and wealth systems, mm -hmm. you are actually serving your consciousness as well and mindfulness and all of that. So mm. it's what do you do at that moment that tells you what you are serving. Because all these things have got food as well that they eat. So when you are reading the word, you are mm. feeding the spirit its food. Mm. But it's the body that must pick up the, it's the hand that must pick up the Bible, <laughs> open the verse, read. So the body then is a good servant in that way because it can serve these other ones. Mm. Often, we do not have the body as the servant. We often have the mind as the, as the master. Mm. Uh, and I want you to hear me right. I'm calling one the seven, the other the master. Mm. So I'm saying if your mind is the master, then the body is in trouble. I don't know if you've met anyone who's, um, they normally say when a, when a woman um, acts foolishly, it's the body that bears the brunt or bears the pain <laughs> of the consequence. 
it's not just for women alone, but I think every one of us would know mm. when we are doing foolish things, it's often the body that, that has to bear the, the brand and mm. bear the, pay the price, yes. So it's all of those that you are dealing with. Often people start from the mind. I normally say, I don't trust the mind mm. because it's got ego, it's self-centered. I mean, the mind could even doubt itself. Um, you, you are a speaker, you know this. Mm. You prepare, you stand up, you kill it when you step, when you sit down, the mind says, ah, ha, ha, you didn't say that. <laughs> you, you forgot, didn't, you that, forgot part. that. And you're like, but mind, we just went so hard. <laughs> how, how? So I don't trust the mind in that way. Also, when the mind um, knows the intentions, it trusts, but when it doesn't, it judges by, by actions. It judges actions a lot. So what does that mean? I'll hurt you and justify, but when you hurt me, it's, it's unjustifiable. But it's the same mind that looks at that and does that. So I normally say, let the spirit be the master. But when the spirit is the master, the spirit then can give others their ten. The soul can have its ten, mm. the body can have its ten, and all of this. Because the mind then becomes the north that sort of governs what we do around here, in terms of here mm. with myself. If someone has not studied dealing with spirit and they want to start on this path, how do they start? You think you haven't started, but actually you have. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know. Mm. People mustn't forget. Just because you don't know what goes on on the inside of your body, it doesn't mean it, it's not going on. Just because you don't know where the heart is in your body, it doesn't mean the heart is not pumping and working. Okay. So your spirit is at work. Um, um, you're just not aware. You're just not aware. Um, why, 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 why do you feel like um, sometimes you are confronted by certain truths in your own life? Why sometimes do you feel like you are successful, but something is haunting you, mm -hmm. where you're not happy with your very success? Um, why do you look at somebody that's struggling and feel moved? It's mm -hmm. all spirit at work, but it's just that you are not aware. So what they are saying is have mindfulness so that the spirit is not just reverberating on its own. Mm. It means then you are aware and you are present. And you can and respond. The spirit, yes. So what I normally do then is I normally go back to saying the Bible in Genesis, in Genesis the book of Genesis says when God created man, he, he put together the body, which is debt and whatever that you have. And then it says he then breathed through the nostrils the breath of life which is what they call Ruach, which is the, the, the breath of God. Mm. So no matter, I normally say, go back there and, and just breathe in and out. That on its own is spiritual. The breathing mm. in and out already makes you realize that it's not just the oxygen you are taking in. You are taking ideas, you are taking in hope, um, you are taking in life. Um, and therefore, once you are aware, even the things that were troubling you, would sort of be dealt with. Because often people think we are thinking when we are not thinking, worry is not thinking. What is it? It's worry. <laughs> thinking is creativity. Okay. When you come up with something new, that's thinking. Because the mind is doing its thing. It's imagining. You are using mm. imagination. Mm. Anything else. If you're using memory and you're using trauma and you're using fear, that's not thinking. Mm. It sounds like, it looks like you're thinking, but actually you're not thinking. You're actually just dealing with something else. Mm. If you are cutting something in the kitchen, you don't carry the knife around the whole day because you need it. You put it down, but you know where to get it, in a drawer somewhere, you'll pick it up. The mind must work the same. Mm. Put your mind down when you're not thinking. And some people say, but I can't stop thinking. That's the very problem you must deal with. Mm. That is why then you need the spirit that can say, let's be present, let's be present. So when fear is approaching, um, it's the same. I mean, we grew up fighting. Sing of a fan, uh, mm. They will teach us that if you see an enemy that you are fighting with, don't look at how big they are. Channel yourself and deal with them. So therefore, you could actually even encounter a giant. It didn't matter who they were. The question was, who do you think you are against them? So mm. I know it's a bad example in terms of fighting, but it's anything as well that you can look <laughs> at as well to say, even if you look at an idea that you want to create, if you, if you think I'm going to do this and it looks too big and it scares you, you can actually look at that and say, no, but actually I can do it. And the can do it then makes you sort of go through the idea and see that it's big. You are scared because it's big, not because it's impossible. So it's mm. all of that that I'm saying you'll have to do. So spiritually for me, I don't know with, um, uh, with other people, I run to God. That's what mm. I do. I do. 
Because, I mean, if you look at a person like David in the Bible, mm. not that I'm preaching people into Christianity here, it's spirituality. Mm. So I go back to the maker. Basically, I go back to the origin. I go back to why am I here? The minute I feel like I'm scared, but why am I here? Will I just be born to just be scared and be tormented by fear? Will I, will I be born to just be tormented by bad decisions? Um, be tormented by lack? Okay. The fact that my parents didn't have, does it really mean I can have? Mm. I need something else there to help me. So I normally then say, we can go back then and say, your personality is important here. Okay. Very important. Because it's what we, it's what we meet. You see, I like your personality because you're a down-to-earth guy. You really care about people. Mm -hmm. um, very teachable. Um, a love of people's success. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's your personality. Super mm -hmm. chilled guy. That's your personality, by the way, mm -hmm. Masego. Um, <laughs> Thank in you. In reality, in terms of what I'm talking to. But that personality, there's also your character then, which mm -hmm. backs your personality. But we do mm -hmm. not see your character. We see, we interact with your personality. personality. So it's the personality that we like. So often I normally say, channel your spirit because imagine going to a space and you're already hated before you even speak up. <laughs> That's not nice. Imagine going in and already you are invisible as you walk mm. in. That's not nice. I want to walk in and have presence. I want to mm. walk in and have aura. I want to walk in and be liked. I want to walk in and have sort of some magnetic field that attracts people. Mm -hmm. So it's those things that we look at then, Masego, to then say, for me, the spirit then is important because when the, when the mind is confused, when the soul is frustrated, when the body doesn't know what to do, often the spirit is the one that can give us faith, that can give us hope, uh, that can minister to us. And before you know it, uh, you, you somehow feel like you can breathe again. If we are not preaching anyone into Christianity and the question becomes, if spirit is this important, how do I feed spirit? So we say the word of God, mm -hmm. it goes back to the Bible again. Okay? <laughs> any, any belief system, you would find that they have a way of administering. For instance, indigenous knowledge systems, which is how we grew up, a rural, Kwanongoma. Yeah when you are going to do anything that you're doing for the spiritual realm or the spirits there was chanting that you do that chanting itself transcends you to the spiritual realm there were certain things that you'll do um uh, you'll do those things those those were parts of channeling the spirit okay. so the spirit doesn't only mean religion or bible or christianity it just says, even when a musician wants to sing, they have to channel and go deeper. There's a mm -hmm. difference when a song comes from the spirit or when a song just comes from a shallow place. Artists do the same. The very ecstasy that you feel when you're drawing something, it's all spirit. So let's just agree, we all have spirit. Mm. Weirdly, even those that don't think they have a belief, not believing <laughs> is a belief. You are believing in something you just don't know yet. Mm -hmm. So for me, then I run back to that. That is my God. And it's not a God that I'm going to look at that is sort of an idol that I look at. It must be a God that agrees with me, that sort of feeds me, that, that is on the inside of me. And mm -hmm. before we go even deeper and start scaring people in the spiritual realm, because some of this needs to be facilitated yeah. by somebody that's a spiritual coach and all of that. But I just wanted to know that sometimes just being quiet closing a door, be quiet, sometimes even switch off the lights so that you're in, 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 in darkness and just try and listen to yourself present. That's mm. spiritual already. Okay. Um, and I think therefore that's... you start realizing that, oh, so I can, I can see me, even mm. though I can't see me because it's dark, but I can sense me because the sensing of yourself, that's where it starts. That sensing of yourself is the spirit you in you. It's the all-knowing, the all-wise. It's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the nature of God that is in us. Because we are made in the image of God, but also there's the nature of God in us. I'm natural and supernatural. Mm. The, the physical, the mind, they're all natural because it's physiology. But there's supernatural, things that you can't explain. 
how you just know what to do. Intuition. Just know. Intuition is part of it. Mm. But it's even deeper than intuition. Um, 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 sixth sense is part of it. But it's even deeper than sixth sense. It's just the all-knowing. It's like you've been here before. When you when you watch YouTube, you, uh, YouTube <laughs> or LinkedIn, um, or even look at TikTok, there are kids that you listen to and you're like, "Geez, you're too young to be saying the things you are saying." There's some all knowing and some always. Others will say, "Oh no, that one lived before." But well, somehow there's the channeling of a greater spirit and a greater being mm. on the inside because you're not just the physical being. You are five. You're the spirit that lives in the body with thoughts and emotions, which is mind and soul, mm -hmm. and therefore you have awareness, which is mindfulness. I think in listening to you, definitely, spirit becomes very powerful. Uh, does it tie into faith? I'm asking because I came across some fact. I didn't know that the word mesmerizing actually came from a person, Anton Mesmer, who was a hypnotist. Apparently, he was heating, healing people, by putting magnets on their body, right. and they would get healed but then he discovered that it wasn't the magnets it was he, them channeling faith in him right. so he switched into hypnotism and they started calling it mesmeritism or something like that yes. and then the word mesmerized was born but basically saying if he induces you in a hypnotic state to believe you will get healed just like if he induces you to believe that in this water there is something you're allergic to. Right. And he does this, you start coughing. That was mesmerism. Based on faith, a lot of people getting healed because of their faith. And even if you look at the Bible, it's a lot of times where Jesus says, according to your faith, or your faith has made you whole. And for me, faith is then that belief in you that truth in you that wisdom in you that God in you mm. because it must be intrinsic well, that's what I said mm. if you are using my faith and not yours then it's, a, it's extrinsic it's going to be it's going to be short lived it's not sustainable and, and it won't be direct and impactful if I say the sun is the hottest thing on earth but if you take a bowl of water and put it under the sun, it won't boil. Mm. Because though it's, it's extrinsic, because it's not direct. But if you take a few twigs of wood and put it under that pot or, or, or container and light the fire, small as it may be, it will, it will burn that thing. So that's, what, that's the faith you want. The faith, it, little as it may be, mm. there must be something in you that says, I want to. That says, not me. Mm. That says, never. There must be something in you. But let's break it down then in terms of what can this thing be? You call it faith, yes. But for me, we could break it down to eight things as we get older. Let's get deeper then. Okay. Eric Erickson in 1959 <clears throat> writes a paper on, mm -hmm. he calls it eight psychosocial st stages of personality. Yeah. He then says children before, between zero and eight years, by the time they're eight, they already have wisdom. But they start from hope. Mm -hmm. He says from zero to one and a half years, mm -hmm. when a child cries mm -hmm. and they're hungry or they, are, they need a nappy change and somebody comes all the time when they're crying to change their nappy and feed them, mm -hmm. they're already creating hope. There's oh. a, a writing of hope in their personality that when I cry, somebody would come and help. Mm. The opposite is true. Mm. When the child is crying and they're wet or they're hungry and no one comes, then they, they write hopelessness in their script. Oh. Now, by the time they're one and a half years, a child that is hopeful and a child that's hopeless, their demeanor is different, even at one and a half years. Goodness. From there, then, they then develop will. We're going um, to pull up a whole diagram from Mobi's book so that you follow up on this conversation as well. Right. So then there's then the will. Then he says from zero, from one and a half to three years, a child then develops will. The fact that they want to crawl, that they want to hold a table and stand up, that they want to mimic what the parent is saying, is also part of developing that will. But it's developed from love because then there must be somebody that says, come. Okay. Somebody that says, it's going to be safe crawl. 
as they move those things away, harm, harm, as they move harm away from your way, therefore, will happens. From mm. there, that it says, all of a sudden, a child, <laughs> child develops purpose. They want to be useful. Breaking things, yes. You'll find them taking flour and breaking whatever and smearing it over their body. <laughs> they are trying to negotiate purpose and finding their own purpose and purpose of things. They mm. get bent, then they know it's fire. Mm. Or oh, if you touch there, you're going to get bent. He then says from there, competency then develops. By the time there are five fish or five fish there, they, they feel competent to now. Develop some skills. Yes, now they can communicate. Sounds, by the way, needs a parent who can even figure it out. And therefore, that also is intuitive as well because they'll be like, a parent will know and they'll even laugh with them. And mm. then a child starts knowing, oh, actually, I can be competent in asking for something. And then, uh, I mean, this, this we've seen a clip on TikTok happened when they say, be careful when a, a toddler brings you water to drink because you don't know where they scooped it from. So, <laughs> Could be out of the toilet seat, it could be. but it doesn't matter. They just want to be useful and be competent in taking a cup, getting the water, even their own cup sometimes. Mm. So they're developing competence. And from there, we grow then into developing fidelity. All of a sudden, I'm now committed to you mm. and committed to us and committed to my being. All of a sudden, then anything that threatens my toys, I'm fighting for it because you are encroaching my space. And therefore, all of a sudden, if I, if I give you a lollipop and you're not giving me, then I look at you differently <laughs> as a child because what's this now? It means, you know, so I can't trust you. All of a sudden, there's that. But all of a sudden as well, kids start telling lies when they're young. And as you mm. correct them, you are teaching them from infidelity to fidelity. Because remember, they've just learned competency and they're trying to manipulate so that they're mm. given rewards and applause. And therefore, they can use infidelity sometimes. Teach them then the right way, the truth, the whatever, the values. All of a sudden, then there's fidelity. From there, mm. love starts happening. Oh, there's nothing as beautiful as a hug of a toddler or a hug of a child. That hug is warm, that hug is soft. And by the way, it's soothing. Why? Because you are being hugged by love itself. They are love. They are innocence. And he says then from there, then they move to care. All of a sudden, you see them caring for things. Uh, girls are even more uh, um, inclined to doing that. You find them combing to, uh, dolls and you find them bringing uh, 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 you know, play trays to feed you and stuff. They are caring for you. When you're saying, they're like, oh, mommy, uh, you look sad today. That's the care coming out. And from there, then the wisdom around seven and eight years starts mm -hmm. coming. So Eric Erickson says you spend eight years then to develop this in your personality. Mm -hmm. I have decided, guys, sometimes you're dead and these things are not developed. Yeah, I was going to ask, mm -hmm. so what goes wrong with people that never develop some of these? Then you'd follow what I'm proposing. What I'm proposing mm -hmm. is then, instead of cramming it in eight years, do, do decades. So in other words, go back, even when you're 42 or 30 or 29 or, or 19 or whatever age, go back now and say, hope, I must have had hope before I'm 10. So in mm -hmm. other words, when you're raising your kids, between zero and 10 years, though they're going to develop all the way to wisdom by eight years, don't worry. Just push that by the time they turn 10 years, they must have developed hope. Mm. Important. Okay. And hope is developed in you encouraging them, in you then showing up for them, in you then making sure that when they cry, someone is there to support them, someone is there for them. In them knowing that when I fail, I'll have to try again instead of giving up. That's also developing of hope. Because that hope then is going to help them with survival instinct. True. And therefore, that's the hope then that you're developing. Then at 20 years, at least, have will. Uh, and, and you'd see teenagers are big on that in terms of will and if, questioning things. Yes. If a parent says, okay, my child is 16 and they missed out on one or two or three of these, how do they help the child fix it? Maybe Always go back to hope. Always if you're only 30 or 35 and you've struggled with alcohol or addiction or whatever, I would normally say the first thing we must help you with is hope. Let's mm. get you back to know that you are not hopeless. That you can create hope. So okay. always go back to hope first. Mm. Dr. Can I do it myself? Hope. Yes, you can. 
Uh, yes, but there's a lot of work that you must do to de to deal with the, the naysayers and the negative words. In oh, yeah, head. I hear you. If those are too much, then you may need someone else to assist. Say, for mm. instance, your own parents were the ones that inculcated hopelessness. It would be hard for you to just say it. But yes, you can psych yourself up. The same way you said mesmerizing, mm. yes, you're, hypnot you're hypnotizing yourself, literally. Mm. Because it's believing. That's what faith is. Mm. You just believe. Even when you fail, you believe. And that's how you build, by the way, uh, your, that. So I'll start yeah, with the hope, hope first. Mm. That window of hope is so important. I can, I can, I can, I cannot emphasize it even more, because anything we're gonna pursue in life will depend on our level of hope. Those that are hopeful, those that have hope, would always be steps ahead from those that don't have, because mm. somehow. I mean, I'm, I was raised by my grandma, mm. who passed in 2010. Mm. 14 years later, she's here. <laughs> she's the hope I carry. <laughs> Why? All the words she spoke now are inside me. Mm. And sometimes I have to carry a picture to remind myself, because I'm, it's easy to forget. And, and sometimes you do that. But the person that facilitated that hope for me was my grandmother. Listen, when we were down and out, she would be the one that would pick up that my well was running low. And she'll okay. sort of help me with the pick up or pick me up. So find hope in those that can bring you hope. Mm. And by the way, bringing hope is simple sometimes. It's not as hard as people think. Let's say you've dated an ex that was sort of speaking ill, abusive. sort of abusive and destroying you. Mm. All you need is somebody who says, I love you just for who you are. Someone who says, I know you're working so hard. It didn't work out, but let's try one more time. Someone who says, I believe in you. Um, those words, by the way, all of a sudden, they're just said by a stranger or somebody, but to you, they mean a lot. But they are not as powerful because they're still extrinsic. Mm. They're coming from outside until they are allowed and grabbed on the inside and become intrinsic. Once they're intrinsic, then it's you. It's like a bait. It's like when you are running a relay. Yeah, relay works that way. If you are running 400 meters, it's 100, 100, 100, four people. The first person that starts, as you are approaching, the one on the 200 meters is already running as well, but they have, they have their hands stretched to the back to get it. And that's what we are saying. We are saying hope is passed on from external to internal. Mm. And if no one does, then yes, you may need to get a self-help book or psych yourself up. But you can't tell me that in the whole world, there's no one who's ever been kind to you, <laughs> who's ever been nice to you, who's ever been there for you. Or find that you those. can find them. Find those. And though there may be 10 people you know and nine are negative, there'll be one. And seek those people then because mm. hope must be cultivated. But once mm. you cultivate from a seed of hope, it then becomes sort of a seed in the ground of your soul. Mm. And then that seed then sprouts into sort of a tree of hope. Mm. And then that tree of hope then... All of a sudden, the tree of hope then gives birth to more fruits of hope. And those fruits of hope then have got seeds of hope in them. Before you know it, you now have a forest of hope. And therefore, nothing can stand in your way. I'm mm. at that point now, after 23 years of buffering my hope, that even if you come to me now and say, but you don't have metric, I'll say, so what? <laughs> really? Because I'm not ignorant because I don't have metric. No, it's just that maybe you would be the one that would say, I don't have metric, and therefore you think I'm ignorant, but so what? So it does matter because I know my systems and processes. I've worked so hard and therefore I have hope in that and I've built that hope. It, hope for me is where it all starts as the foundation. I can see its importance. What if where it's broken in this model is on competence and not because the person is not gifted or skilled but because maybe they lost hope or because of just negative feedback or how they process their life they don't see it. They don't see the gift and the talent in themselves, even if it's there. Because there are people that are good, but they don't believe they are. You see, sometimes people even say you must go do therapy. Mm. Therapy, when you go back to, to face our traumas, it's not going to change the past. Mm. But it removes you from the prison. Because that's what hope is. Hope, it means you are trapped. A part of you is trapped somewhere. Mm. That the future now needs you to be competent. The future now needs you to have purpose. 
The future now needs you to have love. The future now needs you to be trustworthy and have com and fidelity. The future now needs you to have wisdom. The future now needs you to have will. But because you don't have hope, you are trapped in some prison somewhere. Mm -hmm. We must first bust you out of that prison. And by busting you out of the prison, all of a sudden, you come out hopeful. Now, when you have to go there and do anything that requires, for instance, competence, mm. you would have hope that someone will show up and assist you. Therefore, you will study because when you are hopeless, then there's no motivation to pick up the book and study because what's the point? Mm. I have no money to go to university. Mm -mm. Mm. Do your best. You'll be sure. <laughs> someone will come through and assist. Even Nesfas is there to assist. Yeah. So in other words, it's easy to be demotivated and not move. Why? Because I don't see how this thing links to the next thing. I mm. say, just have hope. It may not be that you know what it's going to be like, but just know, build mm. it. There's a movie um, that they made, build it, they'll come. Yeah. What I'm saying is that build that hope. Uh, ma ma Masego, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> you'd, you'd realize this. Go back to some of the people that you know of in yourself. Mm. When you were hopeless, you were a victim. True. Victim of circumstance, victim of people. But once you are hopeful, then all of a sudden, you have this belief and faith in things, faith in yourself, faith in the system. Because then, guys, for instance, in South Africa right now, in other countries, it's easy to be despondent. If you're from Zimbabwe and you look at what the country was, I mean, mm -hmm. when Zimbabwe was rotation, it became Zimbabwe. Um, there was a point where Zimbabwe was the basket of Africa, a like mm -hmm. feeding basket of Africa. It fed Africa and the world. And now it's like hopeless. What mm. has happened? It's still the same as Zimbabwe, but hope has been lost. Mm. So does it mean Zimbabwe can never be returned to its original and even better potential? It can. You will just need people to understand. We have to go back. Sometimes, yes, you start with wisdom mm. and say you need 80-year-olds who say to the 70-year-olds, care, show some care. And 70-year-olds must go to the previous generation, 60-year-olds, and say, show love. You know, just go to and play with your grandkids and be the hope there. <laughs> and then the 60 year olds will go back to 50 year olds and say, fidelity, don't cheat, um, protect your spouse, um, mm. um, have one, one partner, um, um, and, and therefore. Um, even in uh, politics. Yes, yeah. and then you have, and even in politics, yes. Mm. And then you also have a 50 year old, then that must go to 40 year olds and say, be competent. You know, don't do it because you deserve it, do it on merit. And then the 40 year olds must go back and, and tell 30 year olds, purpose. No matter life, no matter how great and exciting life is, you still have to have purpose. So getting married is part of you saying, I want to have purpose. Buying a house is part of you saying, I want to settle and have purpose. But someone must speak to you, a, pre a former, ge a older generation must speak. And then mm -hmm. a 30 year old must speak to a 20 year old and say, have will. In other words, be assertive, stand for yourself, stand up for yourself, speak your truth. And then a 20 year old must tell a 10 year, must tell a 10 -year old, have hope. And sometimes all those beings must be you telling yourself so that the older mm. you tell the younger you. But even the younger you must imagine the older you, what they will tell you. And therefore, yes, you can, you can have those. What was, because this is a framework in your book, what was the intention behind writing the book <laughs> and using these frameworks? The Ericsson framework, and I know there is a part that we haven't spoken to. Right. So, 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 <clears throat> it started as Umuban. The question was, who, who are you? Who am I? Yes. Who are you? Umuban. And I, I, I realized that when I was coaching people as a life coach back in the days, we were always struggling with the question of who are you? Mm. I'll say to a person, you have this gift and people will be shocked. It's like it's a gift they have. Uh, you will do a psychoanalysis test. And if you tell them this and people are shocked, I'm like, so you don't know? <laughs> and then you just say, so well, you have a beautiful smile. And they look at you like, really? <laughs> and like, but why are you not smiling? They're like, no, people take advantage of people who smile. Meaning now you are hopeless because you are not doing you because you are scared of what the environment does. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden then we see you with, sorry, but a beach face resting on your face there. And your countenance then is unapproachable. And you wonder then why no one comes to you and want to assist and see you as trustworthy or whatever, or as warm. So it's that for me that I wanted to deal with the issue of who am I. In a world 
that has over exaggerated education, formal education. Mm. Because then I'd met people who had 10 or 15 certificates, but we have, we had not damn idea who they were. Mm. Who had, were suffering from imposter syndrome. Mm. Or they'll walk in as managers, highly qualified, and they'll start fighting small guys. And you're like, that's a junior <laughs> somebody. You are way ahead of them. Oh, no, they, um, and therefore they'll feel threatened or whatever. And I was like, no, man, there's something about who we are that must be fixed. But also even with myself, I, 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 I sort of corroded even relationships that were there to serve me. Okay. I destroyed uh, my, own, my own help and corrupted my own hope as well. So I, go, I went back and I was like, okay, let me scribble my thoughts then in terms of who am I. Okay. But I wanted to do it differently because for me, it had been that people thought Haundobela changes all the time. That's what people said to me. Haundobela mm. changes his mind all the time. But we didn't realize that was a coping mechanism. Mm. When I couldn't stay in the mind, I will escape to the spirit. Mm. Literally. What, what would that look like practically? So when I was young, and it happened literally, we were sort of slaughtering. And when you slaughter, then you you separate carcass from the skin and whatever. Yes. Cow. Yeah. So as we were holding, I was exhausted and I fell asleep. One of my uncles then took a back of a knife and knocked me on my head. I was angry. I stormed out of the crawl crying. That was the physical me in the mind mm -hmm. saying, how dare you? But as I was crying, when going through the forest, I went to a nearby river, stepped on that river. And something in me just said, pick up a rock and write forgiveness message for your uncle. Okay. And I wrote it on top of the water. And later then I realized that as I was writing that forgiveness message, the pain was taken down by the river. It went down the stream. In other words, as I was standing here, whatever was mm. hurting me, I was now passing it to the spiritual realm through the water. So mm. I'll just write. I mean, you're writing something, of course. You're, it's a spirit already writing in the mind. Mm. I'll literally write, <laughs> and the water will take that. And after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'll feel better. That's how, I, how actually I even discovered, I write it in the book, that one day, as I was scribbling a forgiveness message, I saw an image. Uh, we didn't have mirrors at home, so. Yeah. I saw an image. And it looked like me. And whatever I did, it did. And I was like, who are you? Who are, why are you coping me? <laughs> and whatever I did, it did. And that's why I got to realize, oh, so if there's the me that's on the river, then there's the me that is standing in the river. And mm -hmm. that's how I could separate the two. So I then realized, oh, so if you had me in the physical, I could escape. And that's what I normally did. If people said negative things, I'll, I'll storm out. People always said, no, that one will storm out crying. They didn't realize I was living a painful space and environment. And I'll often run to my safe spaces. Mm -hmm. It was the river and the forest somewhere or on top of a tree somewhere. Those are the three that I'll go to. But when I was there, I'll sit then against a tree. And it felt like there was this tree that just could listen to my pain. And if I, if I could get to it, it just had an understanding where I could speak and it took my pain and I'll feel better and go home now a different person. So it started as that when I was young. I still continue with it now. Mm. So even when I, I used to leave relationships, people thought, hi, it just jumps. It was a coping mechanism. But now you no longer have to jump from one relationship to another, especially if people are confronting you about something that's true and that must change. Then you're in denial. So mm. I then started saying, I'm a common denominator here. Let me fix those things. Because then it ends up working against you when you're yeah. now running from feedback and truth and you're hating people because they're telling you stuff that you don't want to be told okay. rather than you work on that. So it's been that for me that it started as just a need to discuss the who am I. And then I went deeper then and said, okay, if I'm a spirit, which parts of the spirit and how does the spirit work? So then I deal with spirit as a calling, a spirit as a gift, a spirit as in service, but also what do you feed spirit, the word of God? What is the word of God? How do you feed it? I discussed that. Then I went to spirit then is the body. So I'm the spirit. I live in a body. What does it mean to, have a, to be the body? By the way, when we were raised, Tina, we were raised to be an antagonist of the body. Mm. We hated the body. And therefore, we we're told it has edges and sinful and all of that. And I got to realize, no man, you could explore your body. Mm -hmm. I keep saying, I mean, 
even on the first episode, I keep saying some people don't know their body. They haven't explored mm. their body. Some people don't know uh, sexually what makes you orgasm, for instance. Mm -hmm. Where are your G-spots? Some people don't know uh, what's your limitations uh, in terms of when, at what point do you start losing your breath when you're running after, so how long when you mm. run. So for me, then, Masego, it's been those things that I'm trying to push myself then to say, this is my body. I mean, I have tattoos. Part of doing the tattoos was I wanted to explore my body. And mm. people were like, ah, but you won't go to heaven. So I'm like, guys, <laughs> this thing, I'll leave it in the ground anyway. It will go to the coffin if I'll have died and people will have found me. Or the, the birds will eat this thing if, if I die in war somewhere. <laughs> <Quite long gone. laughs> stuff. So no, no, no. It's the spirit for me that I felt like needed to be understood. But I was exploring the body. From the body, then I went even deeper. I explored the mind. And really creativity, um, intelligence, memory, um, 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 uh, in terms of imagination, uh, all of those things. I wanted to know how they work. Uh, I would read things and want to memorize them. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore test myself on those things as well. It was me pushing the body. Um, um, I would play quizzes and stuff. And I was busy pushing my, my mind. From there then I went to the soul. Can I actually sense myself? I could. I could sense my feelings. I could actually feel and hear myself feel things and go deeper and follow mm -hmm. the feeling deeper into the bones by the way now that's deeper because you are not doing shallow stuff mm -hmm. then there was then the mindfulness which is the awareness where mm -hmm. then i could feel that i'm now in johannesburg or cape town or deben or wanongo that on its own some people you would go actually travel and not realize that you've now moved from midland to Joburg, cvd mm -hmm. because your mind is lost and you're confused, like, how, when did I get here? It's like you are not present. <laughs> so mindful, I'm spiraling forward. It's nice then because what it says, it means I'm deliberate about choices, I'm deliberate about my attitude because I'm not just standing still, I'm spiraling forward. In fact, one person said, if you're not growing, you're dying. And mm. I think it was David Molapo that said that. Mm. Dr. Miles Monroe says the richest place in the universe or in the world is graveyard. <laughs> yeah. uh, potential is there. So in other words, when you are not spiraling forward, you are spiraling backwards. Even stagnation spirals backwards because then mm. you stop putting consistency in the doing. If you are no longer practicing as a band, mm. your singing already then spirals backward. If you're not practicing as a team, Therefore, your, your, game, your game plan or your game it spiral regresses. Backwards, it regresses, yes. If you are not as spiraling forward as a class or as, as friends or as a couple or as a mm. family, if you are not spiraling forward, you are standing still or regressing. So therefore, those two can be accidents. They must be deliberate, very deliberate, because hope means that. Hope, you start small with the mustard seed. Mm. You grow it then to a forest. But also, you can always regress and go back to nothing again where a seed is no longer even on the ground on the ground but it's trapped somewhere because if you take a seed Masego, and put it in a container or plastic and keep it on top of the rock they've done this in the studies before they discovered mm -hmm. seeds that on a rock for 3,000 years the potential was still potential why it was still on a container on a plastic somewhere and someone took that thing threw it in the soil what are you doing when you're throwing it in the soil the seed you are taking yourself and applying yourself you are then saying I want to be a contributor. I want to be involved in my own life. I want to be making my own story. I want to write up my own story. I want to move forward. I want to be deliberate with my actions. I want to be accountable with what I do. You are then saying I want to spiral forward. In other words, upwards and forward. Which mm -hmm. for me then, upward and forward, then it means you are moving like that. Like that. Beautiful. It's a beautiful framework. There's something you say in the book, and I think it will be my last question, and then we'll pick it up again. You say, I had to learn to stop being misled by those who buy into my status without first knowing who I am truly. I tell you, it has always ended in tears. <laughs> what does that mean, and how does someone go about answering the question of who am I? Let's start at a basic level. Mm. When I'm relating with you and you're impressed with me, I want to know what impresses you. Because if you're impressed by something that I'm not, then I don't want you to be disappointed because you will be. It's inevitable. inevitable. Yeah. If you're also impressed with me as an employee, I want to know what impresses you. If you're impressed by something that I'm not, 
then I would rather we work on it together so that you're impressed by something that I am because I'm going to disappoint you in any way. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're impressed with me, but it's a me that is evolving. And now you're disappointed <laughs> that I've changed. I've seen people even fight with content creators like yourself, Marcelo. Yeah. Why did you why did you do it that way? Do it the way you want to do it, then leave Marcelo to do it himself. People even feel like you are you are you are sort of offending them. So normally I then say, forget people being impressed with you when you are not impressed with yourself. Ooh. Because then then you'd seek them to validate you. And you'll always want to try and impress them. And when you are trying to please people, you'll do that at a cost. All you want is appreciation or positive feedback, but you are, you are denying yourself. So I would, I would rather then that we work on it together mm. so it doesn't end in tears. When I say it ends in tears, if I refuse me and subjugate me or, or, or silence myself, then it's in tears for me. You win, I lose, because then whatever you're projecting on me or demanding of me happens, even though it's not who I am. So in other words, I'm now being made to be something that I'm not. So I'd rather then say, let's negotiate it together. Basically then, it's your duty. Anyone with a gift, it's your duty to make room for your gift. Okay. And when you are not making room for your gift, regardless of what the reasons are, you're just creating manufacturing excuses. If you're saying, I don't have enough money, that's an excuse. Mm. No one has ever done it before me. That's an excuse. Um, I, don't, I don't know how, where I'm going to start. That's an excuse. And therefore, work on yourself in that way. Because mm. people then, that's why hope then is important. Because hope then means, I wake up every morning, Masego, and I have to smoke something in my head. <laughs> it's like you smoke something in your head, by the way, when you wake up with this thought. Because then you're actually saying, I'm going to do this. When we met, it was a Monday, Masego, if you remember, for the second time. We yeah. first met on a Thursday mm. at, a t at a radio show somewhere. Yeah. We were strangers. Mm. The following week, which we moved quicker on, which is mm. hope, we moved on that Monday. We were meeting at Sunning Hill, if you remember. Yeah. On that Monday, you had your own ideas. I had my own ideas. <laughs> Today, we were working on something that no one thought could be done. But yeah. you and I knew. And mm. therefore, we there had to show up hope. and worked on it. And now that we are orchestrating it, we are now spiraling forward. In spiraling mm. forward, we are now doing our second episode. Mm. In our second episode, it's better than the first one. Mm. We were better prepared. Mm. We discussed this even before, what's gonna, what we're going to do. Mm. And therefore, now though I'm watching every Mindset podcast that comes out, why? I'm part of this now. There's this mm. hope we are building. Once we've partnered in that way, you're not feeling like you're doing it on your own. <laughs> and therefore, I'm True. doing it with you. Before we know it then, our mindset is already moving towards profits because in mm. any case Marcelo, i believe when mm. we say mindset profits yeah we are saying it's a mind that is set on profits <laughs> meaning there's a mind that is set on loss there's a mind that is set on backwardness scarcity there's a mind that is set on scarcity mm. but we want a mind that is set on profits that is set on abundance that is set on hope that is set mm. on love that is set on consistency that is set on honesty mm. that is set on truth that is certain <laughs> fairness, that is certain all these things that are positive, and we can be the facilitators of that mm. so that as we do it intrinsically, others do it intrinsically as well, mm. and we then become tribes of the future, not tribes that fight against others, but tribes that want to universalize mm. what, what, is, what it means to be human so that oneness is now universal. So that when That's I look beautiful. at you, I look at me. So that when I look at you, I look at my brother. Meaning I don't have to come across you now. I must go within me, and whatever I find inside me, I must universalize. Meaning, whatever, wherever I go, if I want to meet a person, I don't go across to greet them. I first go within myself and come up on the inside of them. When that happens, apparently they find that I'm more interesting. <laughs> it's like you've paid attention of me. It's like I'm fascinating why. I'm not rushed. I'm not doing lousy pickup lines. I'm actually being me and being present. I'm interested in you mm. because I'm here and I'm cultivating hope as well. I'm mm. not a taker then in that way, mm. more than I'm a giver. That's beautiful. And I see how the model ties into what we are doing and your approach to things in general. I think the last thing I would be asking would be then, if someone says, this has been beautiful, 
I still want to answer the question, who am I? Because this is a question that many people wrestle with. And one thing we said at the beginning, you'll remember, we said, actually, it's a quote in your book as well. You say, let me read it. You say, Socrates says that people make themselves appear ridiculous when they are trying to know obscure things about life in general before they know themselves in particular. My proposed um, description of self, because humanity is the same, we are the same as humans, Mm. we are just different in nuances in terms of gifts and stuff, but we cry the same, we feel the same pain. So I'm proposing a universal definition when we start on who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I am a spirit, Mm -hmm. I live in a body Mm -hmm. with thoughts and emotions, I am the awareness. That's where Mm -hmm. I start first. I am a spirit. Mm -hmm. I live in a body with thoughts and emotions. I am the awareness. Or I have an awareness or mindfulness. Once you go back then to that, it means that when you say I am a spirit, then study what a spirit is. Mm -hmm. Then you study theology. Then you study philosophy. Then you study sociology. Then you start seeing spirit in people. And spirituality becomes then more than religion. You're no longer going to church because they said go to church or there's some building that you're going to. Then church becomes more than just us congregating. It Mm -hmm. becomes us then coming together. Then you then have to say, if that's a spirit, then what's the body? Study your own body. Then you understand. I have certain types of food that I could eat for certain things and others. So it starts there. Those five things for me are Mm non-negotiable. Spirit, body, mind, uh, soul Emotions. and mm. conscience or consciousness or mindfulness those five things start with any but they will all they all have to lead you to the spirit mm. so for me that's the one then once you are covered on that when then i say i'm a zulu boy from Wanongoma that has got these gifts and this it's still me when i then say i'm a hard-working man that this this then it's also resonating with who i am when i'm saying that i'm a founder of atlas cell group it's no longer the external thing that I'm using to define. It's the things I'm doing that can't define me, but I'm always me. Then when I say I love fashion, then I'm not defined by fashion. Meaning, if you strip me of all the things in the physical realm, I'll still know who I am at the core, because I'm not the it, I am the being. I'm not the human uh, becoming, I'm the human being. Mm. I'm not becoming something I'm not, because you're already there. Masego, before you were born as you were conceived, Mm. Who you will be at eight, who you were at eight is who you will be at 88. Because you are not changing, you are spiraling forward. Mm. It's only when you are not spiraling forward that you'll often feel like I'm missing out on something. Like, oops, I didn't do that right. But for me, all that you'll ever be is trapped on the inside of you. And therefore, the people around you as well. Because it's not just you. Remember, for yeah. me to facilitate who I am, I must also observe you who've mm. come before me. And then we observe others. Like I said, a 20-year-old must share with the 10-year-old, but look from the 30-year-old. A 60-year-old must inspire the 50-year-old, but be inspired by a 70-year-old. But even you yourself, at 40, you must want to inspire yourself to 50, to 60. Mm. Therefore, you are forever growing up and forward, up and forward. And, and, and if then you struggle with something, you know where to go and fix, and what to go and fix, instead of just... In that so these core five are where someone has to absolutely start from to in understand themselves first, in my view. and then they can go after the world in my and view. go chasing after the spiral forward, the yes. forward spiral. And whenever you struggle with the world extrinsically, come back intrinsically. And when you struggle with intrinsically, go deeper. Then, when you go deeper, you'd often feel that the body is feeling the pain. Follow the pain. The pain will lead you to the soul. Follow the soul. The soul will lead you to the mind. Follow the mind. The mind will lead you to the spirit. And the spirit is where it's at. Again, when we are fixing things, start from the spirit. And then the spirit must move to the mind. Because also the spirit and the mind are always working together. It's when the mind creates logic around things that things make sense even for the spirit. So the spirit is also trying to unpack itself. But because we are living in this natural world, spirit also doesn't have a language sometimes. So the mind must have this language. Hence, this generation is far better than the generation that was here 100 years ago. Why? The mind is forever trying to unpack itself, and the spirit is then for expressing itself as well. We are doing great things, 
that were unimaginable before. Why? The spirit and the mind, if they can work together, spirit and mind, then soul joins there. Then the body will willingly do whatever it's instructed to do because then the master that controls the authority that is over the body is not going to be corroding the body or abusing the body. Rather, it will allow the body to flow so that when we are learning or going through challenges, it's the same. The mind, the spirit, and the soul, and the awareness then can always work with the body. Guys, some people out there have great bodies and they're enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not just that they have money. People think, I must be in that the Petrus Mutepe for me then to live a good life. He will even tell you, if you get there and you even fix certain things, you'll just be a fool with money. You'd rather mm -hmm. go back then and fix certain things. And when you get there, then it makes sense because then you are not the money, mm -hmm. but you possess the money. Beautiful. Last words from you. I guess you can tell that person. How does this apply to someone who... An entrepreneur who has lost it all, business has been bent down, or they can see their business going on a standstill or on a downward path. So, go back. Have you dealt with the hope that you've lost? Because you became hopeless. Mm. Let's go back then and say, you've lost it, yes, but it doesn't mean you can't build it up again. Because the fact that you had built it, you built it yourself. Mm. You lost it because maybe you made mistakes, or maybe because the timing was no longer good. Some ideas run out of time and you can't be pursuing them if there's no favor or there's no space for them for you to do them. The environment doesn't agree because then you're going to pull and push and have to work hard. Yeah. So then I'm saying to those that want to be entrepreneurs, go back there and say entrepreneurship is an attitude thing more than just gifts. You first have to want to do it. Yeah. And wanting to do it, the next thing then, what problems do you want to solve? Those problems then are already coming up with your why. Because that's you cal cultivating your why. You are not here just to make money in your business. You have to solve problems. And as you mm -hmm. solve problems, that's how you make money. I would rather then make money from solving problems than just make money and not even know which problems I'm solving. Because that money could be problems. You could be creating problems for us <laughs> as a business. So what problem do you want to solve? Where do I look for? Either look at your passion or look at what haunts you. You are not, you are not haunted by the same thing. People on the streets don't haunt me like ignorance. Mm. But if you're haunted by people on the street, then do something with that. And business is not just enterprise in terms of strategic enterprise that you're doing. Business is impact that you have, mm. and therefore you paid for it. So you go back then and say, what impact do I want to have? And therefore, what do I get paid for? Once you have a solution to a problem, mm. then it means you already have a market, but whoever suffers from that problem is your market. Take mm. your solution to them. They will be more than happy to buy it. Why? As they buy your solution, you are solving their problem. Whether convenience or making them feel better or making them improve or taking them to something else or exploring them or whatever. There's something you're helping them do. And therefore, take your product, combine it with those that need it. Because the, mm. as you solve those problems, then new problems get created. Then you are evolving and innovating forward and you are spiraling forward so that you are not just creating ions the way we, mm. I, we created ions, where it was just a steel thing with, with coals, that you can actually move now and even have electric and steam ions. But you also want your solutions to keep spiraling forward with the times as well, which is what okay. we call innovation. In short, that's, that's what I was saying. beautiful, and it keeps coming back to hope. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for sticking with us till this time, and I know it's because you are feeling this, and it's incredibly beneficial to you. Mentor Ngobi will be back again. And remember, please drop those questions in the comments. We will start by answering them even in the next episode. Drop those questions. We appreciate those comments. See you in the next episode. Thank you.